Um, I'm a professor uh, in, in the School of Film and Animation at the Rochester Institute of Technology. It looks like we're a little bit um, not framed correctly here. Um, okay, what's that? <laughs> All right. Well, um, and I teach um, uh, a number of different kinds of courses. I was actually trained as a filmmaker and also an animator. Um, I ha come from a science background, and um, I also am a, am a diver, so I'm kind of all over the place, and I speak a couple of different languages. I was, uh, at one point in when I was learning science, I was at UCLA, um, an advisor asked me what I was doing in uh, my college program, and I told him I was doing psychology, and I was taking some Russian, and doing art, and science courses, and I love science, I love math, and he said to me, uh-oh, <laughs> you may wind up a jack of all trades and a master of none. And that became a cloud over my head for a few years, uh, thinking that maybe I'm not going to accomplish anything in depth. And I went forward with that until I met somebody uh, when I moved out of science and into uh, art um, at the San Francisco Art Institute, Larry Jordan, who was my advisor. He's, he asked me again, or, uh, you know, what is your background like? And I said, um, Uh-oh, here we go. <laughs> and I told him, I said, I have science, and I have language, and I've traveled, and, and, uh, and I've done art, uh, and I also had made films. I grew up in Los Angeles, and we were making films when we were kids. Um, he, he, said, he said, oh, you're a Renaissance person. So no longer was I um, insubstantial or not, or uh, having um, the impression that I was not going to be able to accomplish something, but I would accomplish my goals in life from a position of knowing a lot about a lot of things. So um, I encourage students, uh, in fact, to, to know a lot, not just be too specialized in something, and to somehow these things, they, they get interwoven into what your efforts are and what you do in life. So I want to address a particular kind of approach to creating films, creating artworks that uh, I call true collaboration. And I really wish that this, this, work, this uh, frame up here were showing better. Is there any way to make that happen? Uh, okay, maybe not. Okay, well, the, the concept of true collaboration is where you have artists come together. They, uh, and scientists, too. I've actually worked with an astrophysicist, a composer, and another filmmaker on a work. And it's a really magical experience. There is no one who is a director when they approach this kind of true collaboration. That might be hard for people to swallow, because every, it, especially for films, um, the director basically um, is, has the vision, and then everybody will divvy up uh, the chores and perform the tasks to realize that vision. So in true collaboration, artists or whomever, scientists, people working in, in different disciplines, come together and they, in, they invent, they create a work that is, comes from them all in a mutual kind of way. Um, at RIT in 1997, I uh, went over to the Eastman School of Music, which is in Rochester, New York, where I'm from, where RIT is. And I um, hung out in the halls and found somebody that, I, that actually I could talk to about perhaps doing a program in common with RIT, where we would use our filmmakers, our animators, filmmakers, and their composers and, and performers and create works uh, together. It evolved into this conversation about looking at um, the genesis of, of artwork and how that genesis um, can be from uh, at the scratch, at the very beginning, um, an effort by all the artists invo involved. I already knew from having uh, done previous ex uh, films that I'm not a, an ex expert, for instance, in music. So I always sought out those artists that uh, had that expertise and then had conversations. So I was kind of already, already primed for working in a collaborative way rather than giving my vision as a filmmaker and telling people what 
th it should sound like or what, what the, uh, how it should be performed or what instruments. I would leave that up to somebody else. So the, um, the professor at um, Eastman School of Music um, and I then founded something we called the Image Movement Sound Festivals. And you can see by the words, they're shoved all together, that we really take it seriously. Um, composers and performers at Eastman and filmmakers, image makers, we have people who have come from theater, from literature, from computer science, from, from all kinds of technologies who have participated in these festivals. And then uh, the second year, uh, SUNY, uh, which is State University of New York at Brockport, which is 30 minutes away. Eastman is 12 minutes away by car from Rochester, and then SUNY Brockport is 30 minutes away. So we're pretty much well positioned um, to, to um, uh, that encourages uh, collaboration geographically. So uh, Susanna Newman at um, SUNY Brockport came on board. She's a, she's a choreographer. She's retired now. She's Professor Emeritus Choreographer. Um, and brought to this mix uh, choreographers and dancers, movers, and so forth. So what we would do every year um, is, and this was for 12 years, we lasted 12 years. The reason we didn't go on, it wasn't that we didn't want to, is that funding for this project, which was considerable and mainly came from RIT, was diverted to something called the Innovations Festival at RIT, which is basically a showcase of what is happening on campus at, from all departments, artistic projects, scientific projects, engineering projects, and so forth. So um, we, uh, during this 10 years, we, we would every year at the very beginning of the year have a call meeting of artists. And notices would go out across the campuses and it became even, uh, we, we got other people wanting to be involved. Nazareth College and Alfred University, SUNY Geneseo. We had independent artists also um, participating. And what we do, it's just, it's, it's a very kind of interesting process. And I'm gonna let you know that we're still doing it, but in a different way because the Image Movement Sound Festivals have ended. Um, what we would do is, um, uh, it would be a whole day affair. And artists, each one of them would do a presentation. I'm so-and-so, I live here, I come from music or film, and here is a sample of my work. So we would hear something of uh, the compositions that they have created. We would see film clips. Um, we would have people you know, sometimes performing dance, uh, live dance. We'd have live music. And everybody would have about 10 minutes to, to do these introductions. And then we did what we call a lot of donut breaks, where we provided food and, and drink and a place uh, located nearby to our auditorium where people could sit, stand, and start networking. Everybody's wearing a nameplate, and you start mixing. And what happens is there's this momentum that builds. People generally hang around for the whole day, and they start mixing and networking, and they start to form groups. So um, after three weeks, we assume as the directors that, ever, that people have foreign groups and then they wrote a proposal and we made sure that it was doable um, and there was a vision uh, there. Um, these, these projects would, would, might have two collaborators, it might have three, four. We had one project that had three filmmakers, a choreographer and a composer, a music composer. Now when you put three filmmakers together, you know, what do they have to give up? They have to give up, all right? They have to give into um, to the ideas and the uh, life experiences and the practices of other artists. And that's a very, very difficult concept um, to absorb and then, then live up to. So in true collaboration, um, when artists come together, they start knocking around ideas. And the final idea actually may have come from one individual, but they discuss it, they start to imagine in their own art forms how they might realize a particular aspect of a, of a collaborative work. And what we found is that this process works very well. As a teacher, I wanted to pre present to my students an opportunity to work cross-discipline without 
having them, well, uh, having them understand what that process is. It's a very, very magical kind of um, way of going out and making art. It's nobody's personal vision, there's no director, and essentially what you do is from time to time meet each other and update, you send samples, you, you discuss. Um, I have composed with one compo uh, composer I met through the festivals for on four projects. And we, when we would get together, we would show samples or we'd listen to samples and we might you know, it was a matter of like, how is, how does it work? How does it, how do you feel about it? So you have to really get to know your collaborators. And sometimes, this composer Michaela Aramia Sova and I wouldn't even really talk about the work. We would internalize the music, the 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 and the images, and and let them kind of bask um, in time and. Um, what, what happens ultimately is that each other's art form influences the other, other artist's art form. So for instance, with Michaela, she, uh, her music, sometimes I wouldn't understand what the samples were. I would listen to it and, and somehow in my mind I was hearing something else, but then when I would hear it, what I do, and this is what I recommend, is that you just basically step back and understand that they're trying to tell you something that there's something to learn from it and let it influence how you proceed in, in what you do. So this kind of step-by-step -step building of an artwork where it's very, very malleable and you know, you, you've, you've let go of, of your ego. You're, the, the, the win on it is that you're creating this um, uh, unusual work. The resultant works, what happens is that all the elements of the work, the sound, the music, the, um, the, the performance, the live performance of dancers or, or, or actors, um, they all tend to wrap around each other. We kind of liken it to a, like a double helix. You know, they're the things that, that are connected and feed and respond and converse with each other. And yet these strands of the different art forms have an independence and an autonomy and drive, the, uh, the, the, uh, drive you into the work and through your work and then release you in the end. So it's a very special experience and I really want my students to experience this. Beyond the festivals, ending in 2008, uh, we still have our call meetings. Uh, the call meetings happen twice a year so we can bring on people so they can find each other again. They're doing this, this, these days, these call meetings, because they are looking for a composer or a filmmaker or a choreographer. Um, and it's not necessarily going to be a collaborative work where they're all going to be getting from scratch. Sometimes that happens, but usually it's a filmmaker who's working on a project and wants to work with a composer. Now, there's nothing that's uncollaborative about that, because what happens is, and this is what we stress, is that each artist is to be valued in a project and has something to to say and say it through their art forms. So our filmmakers actually, after a while, they get the idea that they start listening to their composer. One of my students the other day um, uh, got up in front of the class, I was really, it was a nice moment, um, where she said, yes, I, I met with my composer two days ago and, uh, and she's in the middle of her work and, he, and, and she, said, she said, and he had some really great ideas, so I'm gonna be changing this particular area over here of the film. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's the strength. Uh, uh, I also feel it's when you're working with artists is that there's a respect there. You know, I can't tell a composer what to do, and I know, I know that they have something that they want to invest in this work. Typically, this happens when a composer can come on, comes on a project, the director might say, well, I want you to do this, and I want it to sound like that. I heard this music the other day. Can you do that? And the composer say, oh, sure, I can do that. Uh, and then turn around and go, oh, you know, because they have better ideas than you. Okay, um, I said we had a call meeting once a year uh, in the fall time for the projects. Over the next six months, they would make their projects. In the, uh, at the end of six months, then we would do the... the um, um, the festivals, we call them, in multiple venues. And we would have uh, performances, big performances, very technically um, well set up, and celebrate. 
There are no guest artists on the festival. Everybody has to work the festival. They have to do the publicity. They do the reception. They, they work, they do tech and so forth. So, okay, I think I'm running out of time. So I'm going to just basically um, uh, show you just a couple samples. I only have two minutes and I have like seven minutes of work here, so we're not gonna go there. So let me go here and let me come back. Let me come down into here. This, do we have sound, better sound? We need to bring the volume up, up. Can anybody hear this? Okay, I'm not, all right. Okay, that's all I'm going to show that one. Um, and, whoops, I can go there. So many times um, what will ha happen is um, people get so invested in, in, their, in their strand of the work that a lot of technical innovation takes place. This particular film um, has um, a, a student who is a multidisciplinary major at RIT who created a camera system that could um, stretch and elongate um, dancing figures. So this was a collaboration between a choreographer and a, a filmmaker and a composer. Okay, I think that's all I can show you there. Okay, all right, so in my 20 seconds, seven seconds left, um, left um, I like to encourage this uh, approach to art making. I know, of course, in the studios, is this is not the way that, um, it, it's not the pop, pop pipeline and the way that production proceeds. But I like to give people this experience. This, people who come away from this, um, these projects have really gained a lot of, of um, confidence. They've done a creative artwork. A lot of these films and, and performances get re-performed. They go to festivals. They won a, have won a lot of awards. And they're an example of how people can collaborate on a very basic level by exerting themselves as artists or scientists or in their field and, and knowing that that 
energy that is put into the work is in a fraction theirs, in a collaborative style.